It's a fairly basic kit. There's not a lot in it. If you're expecting super detail and all that, you're in the wrong place. They are, I'd say, almost clumsy in some ways. It is pretty chunky plastic. But as you can see, you can still come out up with a nice little plane. So if you're on a budget, uh, you're starting out, or even if you just want to practice, they're not bad. In this case, I did some freehand airbrushing. That's always better to do on a $10 kit than a $150 Tamiya F14 or whatever you're doing. And they can get a lot more expensive than that. So as long as you keep that in mind with these cheaper ones, you should be good. You can see there the cockpit. <laughs> it is bare bones. Although it's always interesting. For some reason, the flight stick on this was quite well done. But... In one of the others I did, the Sabre, it was like matchstick thickness. Uh, they go together reasonably well, but you can see here, I wouldn't say it's flash, probably just uh, some moulding what, where it didn't flow right in. So there is some clean up. I've come in here, just some interior green. Again, I'm not doing anything crazy on the cockpit. There's really no point. If it was an expensive kit, yes. If you're, again, wanting to practice, it's good. Uh, the wheel wells, again, just that standard, what was it, zinc chromate I think they used to use. I'm coming back with, I think this is just Vallejo Black. Just a bit of detail, just to at least give the impression of a cockpit there. It's pretty well tucked in, so... I think you'd need a magnifying glass and someone climbing on your shelves before they notice. A bit more clean up, not too bad at all. This one, uh, or I should say these kits in general, they're almost two-piece, which is at least to me a bit strange. But um, the other problem I think you can get into is because it is really thick plastic, if there is a, like in this case, where you get that wing root not quite lining up, it is a tough job fixing it. I mess around using some filler, as you'll see later. Well, not even filler. I think I just bogged some paint in. Uh, putting in a little bit of detail here. Again, not too much, but if you're a beginner, it's good. And if you just want some practice, it's good. And, and I think even if you're an advanced modeler, it's good to sort of... Test yourself to see, okay, what can you do? I, I see. I say cheap kit, but maybe budget's a better way to put it. So there you can see it comes together really pretty quick. It's just how much detail you want to do. And here I'm just cleaning up some of the uh, gaps. I didn't record any of the cockpit or, the, oh, sorry, the canopy masking. Um, that tends to be tedious and something I'll, if I'm being completely honest, I'll probably watch TV or watch something else while I'm sitting fiddling about doing that. So we're on to spraying already. Uh, in this case, it's North Africa RAF I'm going for. So we're basically right into that desert camo. I think it calls for middle stone, wood brown, light blue. I'm trying to use up some of my um, Tamiya collection, so I was just, to be honest, kind of guessing my way through some of the colours here, a bit of mix and matching. So I think we, we got that blue undersurface. I haven't, I don't think I've ever really done one of the blue undersurfaced P40s. In a weird way, it makes sense to me if they're in North Africa. P40s are one of those planes. I think they always appeal. And I always, I'm probably one of those that did a ton of them when I was a kid. The sharks, jaws, all of that. This is just, again, for beginners, one way that I mounted small parts in this case propeller, nose cone, whatever you call it. It's always something really nice when you airbrush is 
all coming together well and you get that really nice effect. It's actually fun. When airbrushing goes well, it is a lot of fun. And again, it's always good practice. I go through a ton of toothpicks, but they, what are they? Dollar or something in the supermarket for a gazillion of them. In this case, I was almost messing around. The propeller spins around. I've come in just, I think it was olive drab there. I have shown a little bit extra on painting the wheels here. This is one of those ones that, especially if you're starting out, can freak people out, but it really, just like most things, comes down to a fair bit of just practice and take your time. It, it, the, the reason the wheels become important is it's one of the things people will notice if you get wrong. You can also mask them out and use circle cutters and all sorts of things, so I'll do that in different videos depending on what I'm doing. Um, just some more detail painting there. 170 second, you are getting pretty small. I did, oh, I, what would I say? I used a big chunk of tape to try and um, get those two parts to line up properly. So sometimes I'll tape and use elastic bands, all sorts of stuff. Here we are onto the decals already, the famous shark jaws. I think it was actually the Germans that started that, but... Like most people, I tend to just associate it with P40s these days. I think the last P40 I did was the Airfix Flying Tigers. There's the little eyes, shark eyes go on there. What I've done there, in case anyone's wondering, is I've put a bit of masking fluid on the end of a toothpick. It makes a great decal tool. I know you can buy them. I think MIG has a set. So I'll probably get some, but they, they work great. There's always a balance between getting enough water in this case or <laughs> so that it flows but it doesn't drift. So then I come back with some cotton buds or I forgot what you call them in America, um, whatever, Q-tips. I'm using my toothpicks, trusty toothpicks, just to make sure everything's sort of square lined up. Microsol's a new one I've been using on the decals. I'm still getting used to it. I've used, generally I use Mr. Mark Setter, but I heard all rave reviews about the Microsoft stuff, so I thought I'd give it a try. And again, these more budget kits are the place to learn new things. This is just me going through, um, putting on some of that Microsoft. There's always a bit of a balancing act on the decals because you don't want them to dry out, but you don't want them, what would you say, drifting all over the place with too much moisture and so on while you're doing it. So what I'll do is I'll get them all lined up, let them dry a bit, and then I'll come back with uh, whether it, Mr. Mark said or Microsoft, whatever we're using. So you can see the toothpick there. Just a bit of masking fluid on the end. I think I trimmed it to shape, dipped it in the masking fluid. Uh, it works great for decals. So now that's in position, I soaked up the extra water. Then I'd come back, put on the masking, masking sole or whatever. I did use a bit of um, panel liner here. Always have mixed results with that. So, Back to the oils. If you are looking for oils, don't buy expensive ones. The, those ones I use, I had them with other art stuff anyway, so not a big deal. I'm coming in here just doing a bit of detail work, just silver, showing a bit of wear. For some reason, I always think of P40s as really beaten up, but I guess in some ways they weren't the latest, greatest of the World War II planes. I, I think of them almost like the Hurricanes. They they were workhorses, did stuff all over, but they never got the, what, the media attention of, say, Spitfires or Corsairs, P-51s, which were the golden boys. So, yeah, I'm just kind of weathering this quite heavy, and you can go to town on this stuff. I'm just 
adding in wear marks. If you're really going to get into detail, you, you'd probably use zinc chromate so you get that layered effect. I'm obviously, obviously not get, getting into it that much here, but you can see it's starting to look used. I don't like them looking too beaten up. I think some, some modelers probably go overboard, but hey, it's your plane, your model, you can do, do as you like. It's personal preference. So yeah, I'm just coming back through. At this point, it's really just fun. It's quite relaxing. You, you can use your imagination a bit. And, and, and I'd say you also use a bit of common sense, like leading edges of wings, um, all of those where places where crew are going to be opening and closing, treading. You can see here, you use a bit of thought towards it. Um, those cute little wheels put a few bumps and scrapes on there so there there you have it that's pretty much coming to the end what I'm doing now pretty much just um, some what would you call it soot and stuff from the machine guns there you know 303s or something can't remember not really up on all the numbers but yeah it, it, like I say for a budget kit you can come up with something nice so as usual like comment subscribe I always happy to hear people's opinion you can see you can really get something nice in the end just takes a bit more work at times check out my other videos that's always really helpful thoughts and opinions yeah enjoy have fun if you do it yourself let me know how you go Thank you.